Master's Learning Center and ivymasters.com. And I'm Luciano Kosoka. And today we're going to do the 24th question from the Linear Digital SAT, Test 1, Module 2, Number 24 reads, First Computerized Spreadsheet, Dan Bricklin's this account improved financial record keeping not only by providing users with an easy means of adjusting data in spreadsheets, but also by automatically updating all calculations that were dependent on these adjustments. And then you want to ask yourself, could that be its own sentence? Why would I want to ask myself that? Because answer choice C has a period. And you would ask yourself that same question if you had a colon in that spot or a semicolon in that set spot, because all three of those need an independent clause before it would have what could stand alone as its own sentence. And we do have a subject, Vista Calc. We do have a verb, improved. And it is a complete thought. The complete thought part is a little more abstract. You gotta ask yourself, could that be its own sentence? Does it sound like it's a complete thought? And yes, it does. I'm gonna read from prior to the end. We're gonna see if that's an independent clause as well. Prior to Vista Calc's release, changing a paper spreadsheet often required redoing an entire spreadsheet by hand, a process that could take days. Ask yourself, could that be its own sentence? And hopefully you've, um, you've concluded that yes, it can be its own sentence. So the subject there is changing and the verb is re required changing, required redoing the entire spreadsheet. So changing is, is an example of a gerund. Change um, could be a verb, it could also be a noun, but changing when you put um, a ing on the end of a verb and it acts like a noun, it's called a gerund. Anyway. The second part is also a complete thought, which again is a little more abstract. You have to play it by ear. And it is a complete thought. It could stand alone as its own sentence. So let's go to our answer choices, which choice completes the text so that conforms to the conventions of standard English. Answer choice A has no punctuation at all. We've got two independent clauses alone um, that run into each other without any punctuation. That's wrong because it's flatly a run-on sentence. Answer choice B, whenever you've got a comma in the middle of a sentence, you want to read what comes before it and also read what comes after it. And ask yourself, what comes before it? Could that be its own sentence? What comes after it? Could that be its own sentence? In other words, do you have an independent clause before and after? And if you do, it's called a comma splice. It's a type of run-on sentence. It's pretty prevalent. It's pretty widespread on the SAT. B is gone for that reason. Answer choice C. We've got the period. Then you ask yourself, do you have an independent clause before and do you have an independent clause after? What about answer choice C, Lou? What do you think? Is right. Yeah, so C is right. C is going to be our answer because you can separate two independent clauses with a period, of course. Now, answer choice D is wrong. Why? Because when you combine two independent clauses with AND, you need a comma before the conjunction. You need a comma before AND whenever combining two independent clauses. D is wrong. C is your answer. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You can share it with someone who has difficulty with identifying comma splices run on sentences doesn't know that the conjunction needs a comma before to combine two independent clauses so any question you'd like to answer from any official psat or sat or act leave that in the comments i'd be happy to shoot a video on it click subscribe so you don't miss anything and check out our one minute video on tiktok have a great day